Indeed, it's enshrined in the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Given America's English and European roots, places where governments officially sanction one religion, this was a singular advance in human freedom. How did this happen? To answer that, we have to look to America's origins, which were overwhelmingly religious and, to be precise, overwhelmingly Christian. To put it another way, America became the religiously open nation that we know today because it was first a Christian nation. The men who fought the American Revolution and wrote the country's constitution. To them, the issue of religion and freedom were inextricably linked. You couldn't have freedom without religion. In fact, the political philosophy of the founders necessitated a divine foundation. Thomas Jefferson makes this clear in the Declaration of Independence when he writes that all men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. The purpose of government, Jefferson and his compatriots believed, was not to bestow rights. Rather, it was to protect those rights already endowed upon human beings by God. But government isn't enough for a free society. A moral people is also required. That is, a people moral enough to police itself. Virtue or morality, George Washington observed, is a necessary spring of popular government. Thus, for the founders, liberty was not merely the ability to do what one wanted. It came with moral demands and boundaries. They all accepted the rule of life expressed by Benjamin Franklin. Nothing brings more pain than too much pleasure, nothing more bondage than too much liberty. The founders knew that the absolute enemy of freedom was, ironically, a freedom that was absolute and unrestrained. And where was this restraint going to come from? Their answer was religion, which for them, because of when and where they lived, was some variety of Christianity. Let divines and philosophers, statesmen and patriots unite, Samuel Adams wrote, in instructing citizens in the art of self-government, in short, of leading them in the study and practice of the exalted virtues of the Christian system. The Christian system to which Adams refers is composed of Judeo-Christian values, the values rooted in the Old and New Testaments, both of which were referred to by the founders with equal conviction and frequency. Jefferson, Yes, the very same Thomas Jefferson who is so often portrayed as anti-religious. Jefferson abandoned Christianity early in life, but continued to believe in an unnamed higher power. This belief system was highly subversive at the time, and his opponents called him an infidel and a howling atheist. By comparison, Lincoln mentioned God frequently, but never joined a church or officially labeled his faith. Confirmed this sentiment in his notes on the state of Virginia, when he asked, can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are the gift of God and that they are not to be violated but with his wrath? James Madison likewise affirmed the essential connection between religion and morality. The belief in a God all-powerful, wise, and good is essential to the moral order of the world and to the happiness of man. John Adams believed that the doctrine of a supreme, intelligent, wise, almighty sovereign of the universe, a doctrine he credited to Judaism, was the great essential principle of all morality and consequently of all civilization. And he applied this thinking specifically to the new nation he helped to create. Our constitution, he said, was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. As president, he replied to a letter from university students in a way that would surprise many today. Science, liberty, and religion have an inseparable union. Without their joint influence, no society can be great, flourishing, or happy. Meanwhile, another founder, Alexander Hamilton, looked at the French Revolution and saw something much different. That revolution, unlike the American Revolution, had devolved into violence and chaos. Hamilton believed he understood why. The anti-religious force it unleashed, he wrote, annihilates the foundations of social order and true liberty, confounds all moral distinctions, and substitutes for the mild and beneficent religion of the gospel a gloomy, persecuting, and desolating atheism. For the founders, a free society divorced from religion simply could not work and would not survive. It is no wonder, then, that in his farewell address, George Washington chastised those who would claim to be patriots and yet undermine the influence of religion. 
of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. In vain would that man claim the tribute of patriotism who should labor to subvert these great pillars of human happiness, these firmest props of the duties of men and citizens. Here's what we can say for certain about their religious beliefs. One, all of the founders believed in a transcendent God, that is, a creator who exists outside of nature. Two, all the founders believed in a God who imposes moral obligations on human beings. Three, all the founders believed in a God who punishes bad behavior and rewards good behavior in an afterlife. The notion that any of the founders believed in an impersonal deity who merely created the universe and then left it to itself is false. All of them believed in a God who, as Franklin said at the Constitutional Convention, governs in the affairs of men. Let's start with George Washington. Washington's writings, both public and private, are full of references to the Bible. This is certainly true during his eight years as the first president of the United States. Here is Washington at his first inaugural. The propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained. In all likelihood, Washington was an Orthodox Christian. Like Washington, Benjamin Franklin also referenced Bible verses, stories, and metaphors throughout his life. His calls for prayer at the Constitutional Convention were typical of his attitude. Franklin, who had his own unorthodox views, summed up his faith this way, that the soul of man is immortal and will be treated with justice in another life respecting its conduct in this. While the religious views of Washington and Franklin are clear, those of John Adams and Thomas Jefferson are more complicated. Adams referred to himself as a Christian throughout his life, but did not believe in traditional Christian doctrines such as the Trinity or the divinity of Jesus. Nonetheless, before, during, and after his tenure as president, Adams repeatedly asserted his admiration for the Christian faith. Those general principles of Christianity are as eternal and immutable as the existence and attributes of God, he wrote. Likewise, Adams spoke of his great respect for the Bible. The Bible is the best book in the world. It contains more of my philosophy than all the libraries I have seen. Those who suggest that Adams was against religion like to quote from a letter he wrote to Thomas Jefferson in which he said, this would be the best of all possible worlds if there was no religion in it. Unfortunately, those who cite this line never quote the lines that immediately follow. But in this exclamation, I should have been as fanatical as the skeptics of religion. Without religion, this world would be something not fit to be mentioned in polite company. I mean hell. So. Those who quote the first line without quoting the subsequent lines are either unaware of the full comment or are deliberately misleading people as to Adams' beliefs. Like Adams, Thomas Jefferson did not adhere to orthodox doctrine. Yet he often declared himself to be a Christian. I am a Christian, he said, in the only sense he, Jesus, wished anyone to be, sincerely attached to his doctrines. As one of the leaders of the American Revolution, his views are well known. After all, this is the man who wrote in the Declaration of Independence that all men are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You can't get a much more explicit statement of belief than that. These four founders, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, and Franklin, were practical men with a sober view of human nature. They understood that man is morally weak and that religion provides the best encouragement and incentive to be good. It does so, first and foremost, by teaching that choices have consequences, not necessarily in the here and now, but most certainly in the hereafter, meted out by a just God. It should come as no surprise, then, that Jefferson, in his second inaugural, asked for the favor of that being in whose hands we are, who led our forefathers as Israel of old from their native land. The founders did not demand that anyone believe in any particular religion or even in God. Quite the contrary. But while they understood the value of a secular government, they feared a secular society, one without religion. So should we.